Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm gonna color all the stamps. I know I do that in a lot of my images. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I did it with this particular set and why you might want to if you're part of the Human Rainbow, which is coloring ethnic skin tones with whatever medium you're using. I'm gonna use Copic markers and I'm stamping on some Nina cardstock. I've got it in my Misty because I wanted to make several of these just in case I get a fingerprint on one or something. The Misty has saved my bacon in getting my stamping done. So I stamped the three at the bottom and masked them and they're on one mask so I can just move that whole mask to the next piece to be able to do multiples of these. I laid down my next row of them, the little two in the background, and then they're not going to stamp on top of these other ones. So I can pull that mask off eventually and have these guys look like they're behind it. Well, before I move this, I'm gonna make a mask for these two and then fussy cut that out as well. Now, when you're doing your masking, it's helpful sometimes not to have to mask out all the little bits. So I'm just going to cut out the top portion, the same as I did on the bottom and leave them connected. Cause then when I make my multiples, they go over as a unit onto each piece. Cause you have to peel them off and, and move the paper, swap the paper out and you're going to be constantly picking up these masks. It's just easier to do it with uh, all in one piece. So now I'm going to put my last little one in the center and I have my other two on the right and left to create a little scene so that I can color all of these little kids wearing onesies. So when Clearly Besotted sent me the stamp sets for this release, I was so excited to see this one because I've been wanting to do another human rainbow for a while and just talk about the process of selecting and testing out skin tone colors. So stamping all these onto one image, making it one big birthday party picture seemed like an appropriate thing, especially since they're such fun little costumes. They're all in little animals and you'll see that develop as the card comes together. But now you can see when I pull off the masks, all of these little guys are layered on top of each other. And it might look like chaos to color, but you'll see how I do that as we go. I also added a few of the cupcakes and the gift boxes in here too, so I could make it more of a birthday party, and some balloons in the hand of the little giraffe at the top. Now when I go to do skin tone colors, I'm actually not going to list these for you <laughs> because when I do my skin tone colors, I play around a lot. There's no, I have a couple go-to skin tone colors if I'm going to try to do something really fast, but generally when I'm going to do something like this, I'm just going to play. I want to play and see what happens. Sometimes my colors will have, my, my skin tones will have two colors in them. Sometimes they'll have three. I was using a couple of different base tone colors. So, so the first color that I put down, I call the, the base or the main color. And so I've, I'm just coloring that. I'm gonna have some of the kids be darker skinned and some of them lighter, some of them more yellow, some of them more pinky, and picked a variety of my markers. You can do this with the markers you have. Don't feel like you have to go and ask everybody who's colored something with a particular skin tone. Don't, don't feel like you need to go and say, hey, what did you color that with? I need to know. Because then you're gonna feel like you have to go out and buy more markers. I want you to feel like you can use your markers to do this with, and you can have a general selection of light, medium, and dark browns and do this. You don't have to have particular colors to make particular ethnicities. One of the reasons I say that is because depending on the amount of each of the colors you put down, you're going to get a different color. So even if somebody says, use these three tones, you may get a completely different look because of what your, how much ink you're putting down. So you're never going to be able to replicate it exactly anyway. This is something I'll be talking about a good bit in the uh, Copic Jumpstart class that's going to be coming up soon on my blog. And you can sign up for that through a link in the doobly do if you have not yet. But I'm going to add my shadow colors to all of these. I like using blue violets and blues and violets for shadow colors on my skin tones. Right now they look purple. <laughs> And there's like, I think I'm using a BV triple zero, a zero one. And I think there's even going to be some zero twos from what I recall. Cause I was just grabbing markers and that sort of thing. I had 37 markers out by the time I was finished with this, which is why there's no color listing because I don't remember what I used where I really don't. If you wanted to color something like this, what I would recommend if you're using this for a test 
would be to do like I did and, and do multiples. And then on one of the copies, make it your cheat sheet. So you write down all the colors for each of the skin tones. And then you can try out a different one on every single child. And then, you know, if you, if you make a whole bunch of these, that would be a great cheat sheet to have and to keep in the stamp pocket along with the stamps that you've got. You might also want to do them one at a time. I was doing multiples at a time, trying to do all my shadow colors and then, <laughs> yeah, that was where I got mixed up because I couldn't remember by the time I went back to color my light tone, I couldn't remember what base tone I had used. So these are layering all different kinds of colors and I don't know what any of them are. So there you go. But they are going to clearly, by the time I'm all said and done here, they are clearly going to be different ethnicities of children. And that's something that I've been encouraging people to do for quite some time now. And that would be to try to make people, when you color your people, whatever medium you're coloring them with, make them look like the human race because a lot of us are just making white people all the time. Caucasian skin tone people, you've got the skin tones that you like that you've used forever and you stay with those and you never try anything new. If you need to go out and buy some markers, then go for it. You know, that that's certainly something you can do. But I'd recommend trying what you have first in different combinations. And if you need to throw in some peach tones and some pinks and that sort of thing, feel free to mix it up and add whatever kinds of colors you want. Make them as dark or as light as you want. I'm making some of these progressively darker as we go. And you also may find as you get your image done that in comparison to the other colors that you're using on your entire image, that you actually need more color. You may, might need beefier color because they start looking washed out if you put them next to bright blues and bright reds and bright pinks, that sort of thing. So I always kind of take a look over the end of a, a coloring session and just see how things look in relation to everything else. And on some of these, that one at the top, the little giraffe at the top, you can see there's some bleeding going on. These are very small images. They're very tiny and you can cover that up by using some darker colors around it. But when you're using a lot of color and I was using a lot of color in that one because it it kept getting really dark and I was trying to add more color to make it light. So I did do some bleeding, but just use darker colors in that area around it. And then nobody's going to know that it ever had any bleeding going on. So by the time I'm done, you're not going to know that that top one looked as messy as it looks right now. So I'm going to add some hair to each one of these. I'm going to make them all brown and black hair. And the reason is because I wanted the color pops to be on their outfits rather than on their hair. So I did tend to leave that. I started out going around the eyeballs and realized later I should have just colored over it. it would have been faster <laughs> to do that instead of uh, coloring around them. But this is the little doggy. And on each one, you'll notice that I'm putting a shadow inside the little hood. So each one of these has a little hood on. And if you put a darker shadow inside of there, it'll make it look like that recedes in that area. You could even just use grays on top of your base color. So if you just color a base color on these and then choose a different gray for each one, lighter colors use lighter grays, darker colors use darker grays. You can get some shading on them without having 37 colors out on your desk like I did. So there's a lot of different ways that you can approach coloring, of course. This would be adorable in any medium as well. I can totally see it in color pencil and I may end up doing that since I have a couple extra stamped images now that I have shot this video and I didn't need all of them. There was one of them I did get a big old black fingerprint on and that one is my reasoning for why I like to use my Misty to make multiples of things, especially when, when I'm going to make videos because I always seem to have ink on a finger <laughs> that makes a mess and then I got to start the card all over again. This little bear, I like doing uh, little little black bears, black bears with a uh, little bit of lighter lighter brown kind of color on the nose and on the tummy because that just makes him look different than a regular brown bear. And since I already had the brown dog, I figured a black bear would be cute here on this little guy. On each one of them, I'm adding a little bit of shading on the sides or on the bottoms of some of the shapes. But for the most part with something like this, if you end up 
doing any kind of shading at all. It's such a cute image and so detailed and so full of color that nobody's going to fault you if you don't do a lot of shading on these other portions. So relax and give yourself some grace to not get intimidated by this much coloring. I am speeding this up because since I'm not telling you the colors anyway, I just want to talk through kind of the general colors and how I'm laying them out on the card because I'm trying to make sure that each one that's next to another animal has a different colorway on it. So this little guy is in warm grays so that he's separate from the others. If I made him a brown cow, then he would sort of melt into being that, just like that little brown dog below him. So you may want to stamp these out on a piece of scratch paper first to just kind of see which one's gonna make sense where and that sort of thing instead of just stamping them and then finding all of your brown animals are all in one spot. I skipped over the bunny here because I wanted to get that green in there on the, the dinosaur or the dragon or whatever it is. I think he's a dinosaur. And I wanted to do the bunny, but I wanted to see kind of what color would work, but I wanted the green to kind of visually set that off for me before I decided on the color. And that sort of a dusky blue was the color that I decided on. I think those are B9s, the light B9 colors. I did remember something. And then we have a giraffe in the background, so I knew he was gonna be my yellows, browns, and oranges. And that's why I knew that he was going to pop separately from all the others and could stand to be at the top there like that. So we're just about done with the little, little people and their little outfits. And then I just started adding colors to the packages and the cupcakes. And I was trying to use colors that I already had out on the desk so that it would sort of tie everything together and keep them not necessarily equal across the card, but just spread out across the card so that I could get some balance between it and there would be some relation of the colors to each other, but not a whole ton of it um, everywhere. And I also didn't want to go with something where I was bringing in new colors just on the balloons and the packages and the cupcakes because this is a very confusing image already. And if I were to add even more color, I think that would be way more challenging <laughs> to, to try to do something like that. So I added a little bit of ground underneath of everything and then my picture was all finished for my card. I popped it on a, a little bit of dimensional adhesive trimmed my layers so they're a little bit smaller than the gold card base and put some twine on top. And then I popped some glossy accents onto the eyes on the costumes as well as on the balloons. And that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed this and got some inspiration to go color yourself up some images that have some different ethnic skin tones. There's a couple of my human rainbow videos here if you wanna go see some of those. And I challenge you to go out and tackle some ethnicities, even if it's just on cute little images like these or if it's on something fancy. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.